This broadcast of the NRL was proudly brought to you by Scale Rice, Milo, Alamotus, Lay Biscuit Company, Flame Oil, and SP Brewery. TV1 News is proudly brought to you by BSP, our bank, our people. Hello and welcome. This is TV1 News. I'm Mary Sula Kelaton. In this edition, Wohengu says US PNG agreements are transparent. Rambuka visits Ilimo Farm and Hekari bows out of OFC. Papua New Guinea and Fiji have consolidated their stand to unite and speak on behalf of the smaller island countries of the Pacific at the meetings with India and the United States this week. Issues to take center stage during these discussions will be investment and trade in the region, climate change mitigation, environment and conservation, and labor mobility and employment. Mr. James Marape has affirmed Papua New Guinea's position with Fijian Prime Minister Sitiven Rambuka at a bilateral meeting in Port Mosby to unite to address issues affecting Pacific Island countries. Marape said when the Forum for India-Pacific Islands Cooperation commenced tomorrow, Monday, May 22, 2023, PNG and Fiji would be united in one voice advocating for the small island countries of the Pacific on pressing issues common in the Pacific. A similar position will be made to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who is now stepping in for President Joe Biden. Marape said as the elder leader of the Pacific, he has invited Prime Minister Rambuka to make a bold statement at the meeting with India on Monday and to the U.S. Secretary of State after that. Both Papua New Guinea and Fiji as two big economies in the region say in the plight of many of our small island communities and island nations. We have many island communities both in, in Fiji and PNG of PNG, we have over 600 small island communities, uh, but we have island nations who are exposed to the traversity of climate change, imported inflation, tough times in their own local economy as a result of war that is not in their doing or as a result of COVID-19 and elsewhere. Uh, as big brothers in the Pacific, big sisters in the Pacific, uh, both nations, Fiji and PNG, are standing together on those regional issues. India is an amazing global powerhouse coming out from a similar colonial past with a big carbon footprint and a big global responsibility. India offers the South-South nations a great opportunity for the relations. Their economy is big. Today ranked fifth biggest economy. They will be fourth and third biggest economy within this decade. They have capacities that ranges from the floor, basic ordinary technology, to satellite age technology. That is a range of product that nations who are emerging like ourselves can tap into and assimilate much easier, faster than leapfrogging into advanced technology ASAP. India also, uh, in, in my view, has a propensity to do business with small emerging nations much, much better, much, much faster, much, much easier. Marape added that we might be small in land mass, but in terms of space, Pacific Island countries occupy a substantial part of the world. Freddie Mo, TV One News. 
Prime Minister James Marape will be re-emphasizing on downstream processing when he meets with the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. He said the U.S. would be asked once more to seriously consider the downstream processing of Pacific tuna and other marine resources in the Pacific to return greater benefits to Pacific people, including Papua New Guinea. Uh, we have no big uh, input in the global carbon footprint. Uh, our ocean is a big carbon sink, our forest is a big carbon sink, yet we are the biggest victim to the climate change issues and some of these global issues together, the leadership of uh, Prime Minister uh, Rabuka uh, with myself, we will anchor the Pacific in together into a conduit of conversation with global leaders on what we feel, feel is Pacific Island issues. Prime Minister James Marape has assured Papua New Guinea that no laws of the country are broken or will be required to be amended as a result of the proposed defense cooperation agreement with the United States of America. He said this on Saturday night, May 20, in response to commentaries in international media claiming so. Contrary to many commentaries, including in foreign media, on the proposed defense cooperation agreement between Papua New Guinea and the United States of America, Prime Minister James Marape has assured that Section 206 provisions of our Constitution and the Visiting Foreign Force Act 1975 were used to propose an agreement for the Pentagon to deal directly with Mari Barracks. He said local and international sponsors with vested interest are hard at work with what he described as cut and paste opinions that are contrary to the truth, text and spirit of the DCA which was done transparently through due processes since 2015. The Prime Minister clarified that considering our nation's exposure to domestic resource theft and insecurities, as well as our interest to protect our sovereign boundaries, the government had to tap into an existing relationship with the U.S. military and upgrade it to a direct and better relationship. Marape reiterated that there was no immunity for criminal conduct of visiting U.S. forces and the PNC Defense Force would own all assets developed under this agreement. Freddy Mo, TV1 News. Foreign Affairs Secretary Elias Wohengu has also dispelled untrue facts regarding the two agreements Papua New Guinea intends to sign with the United States. Wohengu says no laws of Papua New Guinea were amended to cater for these agreements. Papua New Guinea's Foreign Affairs Secretary and Lead Negotiator Elias Wohengu is appealing to Papua New Guineans to not listen to those who may be spreading misinformation. Wohengu says the two agreements Papua New Guinea intends to sign with the United States, the Ship Riders Agreement and the Defense Corporation Agreement were negotiated within Article 206 under the SOFA Act. The two agreements were negotiated within the prescribed of Article 206 of the National Constitution. The 206 speaks to the Visiting Forces Act of 1975, which provided and enabled the presence of foreign forces in Papua New Guinea under the SOFA Act. Wohengu emphasized that there is no immunity in these agreements for any foreign personnel that will be present in Papua New Guinea. If a crime is committed, punishment will be carried out with due process. He also assured that these agreements will not hinder any future engagements with other countries. This agreement does not in any way preclude PNG from engaging with another nation in a future defense cooperation agreement. Wohengu emphasized PNG's foreign stance that the country remains friends to all and enemies to none. TV1 News continues when we return. Stay with us. It was during and after COVID that really motivated me to want to, to take up life insurance. I think savings is very important and I think One Talk Delight provides a disciplined approach to savings and it's a good investment to want to think about the future because it's always nice to have plans for what you want to do later on.
with you for life. Whether we're playing sport, exercising for fitness, being active for work or play, just having some fun or just chilling, there is one name we can count on that we know will keep us going strong. Scale Rice. Healthy, nutritious, delicious medium grain rice full of vitamins and minerals. Scale helps us maintain a healthy, active lifestyle so we can enjoy every day. You eat them, but me add him special flavor. Put him more flavor, put him more taste. Magic a karu get up and big smile on face. Time for him chicken, a great food too. Sip sip the moo moo, yes magic on you. Magic the taste P and G loves. Our journey starts with you. We'll be there from the start, right through to your life's adventures. We'll ensure comfort and make your safety our priority. We'll take you to memorable moments, no matter where it begins. And we'll get you there like we've always done. The fourth generation Coaster Bus, more than just a bus. A quick favorite meal for the day does feel good. Next Noodles is my choice for a simple meal. It is easy to prepare and fast to cook. And with a touch of flavor and ingredients, mmm! Quality noodles that can be cooked and enjoyed in many different ways. You see, my whole family loves it. It's made here in PNG and comes in different pack sizes. Snacks Noodles, tastier by you like it more. Welcome back to Overseas News. A Perth doctor taken hostage by terrorists in West Africa has been released and reunited with his family. 88-year-old Kenneth Elliott is in good health despite being held captive for seven years after he was kidnapped in Burkina Faso. Seven long years, Dr. Ken Elliott is finally home. He appears to be in good health and we're really pleased that he's home with his family. The Perth couple first relocated in 1972 to help those most in need. Dr. Elliott and his wife Jocelyn ran a medical clinic in northern Burkina Faso near Mali. When we first came, we came with nothing. Uh, I'd make the worst businessman in the world because I I was in no way prepared to do what we've done. In 2016, they were captured by a group linked to Al-Qaeda, with Jocelyn released a few weeks later. Our overriding concern now is for her husband, Dr Kenneth Elliott. He has not yet been released. As months became years, diplomatic efforts continued. Exactly how the government secured his release is confidential, but one thing is certain. The Australian government has a clear policy that we do not pay ransoms. Celebrating now is the University of Western Australia Medical School, class of 63. Dr Elliot, a popular member of the tight-knit group. He's a super guy. Uh, quiet, uh, dedicated. Friends and colleagues followed his career with admiration. Serving tens of thousands of the poorest of the poor people. And um, if it wasn't for Ken, they'd, they'd get no medical attention. Uh, it'd be life-saving for so many of them. Old mates supporting the family in his absence. I'm over the moon to, to know that uh, uh, this has happened, that Ken's now back home with his family. Dr Elliot's family have thanked the Australian government and thanked the public for their support and say Dr Elliot now needs time and privacy to rest and rebuild his strength. The high cost of living and casualization of the workforce are forcing more people than ever into a second job to make ends meet. Some have found that not only is their side job financially essential, it has become their passion, something they would like to turn into their full-time job. Makeup is Alia Muhammad's passion and it's also become her lifeline. I'm thinking of doing something starry. 
think that's the line we're going to go for. Mm. Her main job is as a disability support worker on casual shifts. But when her car was damaged in an accident, she couldn't travel to her client's home and her hours were cut. During that time, I just realised how vulnerable I was because I wasn't able to work and if I didn't have my makeup job, I'd have nothing. With prices going up, she knows she can't survive on insecure, casual work alone. It's put a lot of pressure on me now to like push my business forward, which I'm still grateful for because now it's like opened my eye. Alia Mohammed is one of 925,000 Australians Thank you so much. with multiple jobs more than ever. And we're hearing that more and more, as I say, through our food and emergency relief providers. People are going to extreme measures and taking second and third jobs because their wages aren't enough. People working in education and training, healthcare and social work are the most likely to have a second job. But it can also include less expected professions. That is the purest form. Chocolate is just these cocoa nibs mixed with sugar. For two pilots who were grounded during the COVID-19 pandemic, the road led to chocolate. Brett Holmes and his friend Brad thought of the one thing everyone likes. We just watched some YouTube videos, gave it a go, made some terrible chocolate. Uh, tried again, made some great chocolate. In what can be an unstable industry, they're not the only pilots to have a side job. And the GFC was terrible, 9-11 was terrible for pilots. So a lot of guys do have side jobs as a bit of an um, insurance policy. As the chocolate business takes off, they're enjoying the sweet ride. Minister for International Development and the Pacific, Pat Conroy, will be in Papua New Guinea to take part in the U.S. PIF dialogue to be co-hosted by Papua New Guinea Prime Minister James Marape and U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. This is Conroy's fourth visit to PNG as Minister for International Development and the Pacific, reflecting the Australian government's deep commitment to the relationship between Australia and Papua New Guinea and the special bond between our our people. The United States Pacific Island Dialogue is the first of its kind to be held in person in the Pacific and underscores the strong ties between the United States and the members of the Pacific Islands Forum. Conroy will also announce Australia's $6.6 .6 million investment in a new phase of the Reef Cloud Project, which will improve monitoring and management of coral reefs for Pacific Island communities. Fiji's Prime Minister on his third day in Papua New Guinea visited the Ilimo farm at Nine Mile just outside Port Moresby. PM Rambuka arrived in Port Moresby on May 18 for the third Pacific Pardon, third forum for India Pacific Islands Corporation that will take place on May 22 at the APEC House. Fiji Prime Minister Sitiveni Rabuka visited Ilimo Farm at Nine Mile Port Moresby on Saturday, May 20. Rabuka and the Fijian delegation had a walkthrough of Ilimo facilities and products of the dairy enterprise. Uh, from Amiad, yeah. and uh, she grew out uh, as a the Ilimo Dairy Farm is the first dairy enterprise in Papua New Guinea and is said to be an innovative step towards creating dairy self-sufficiency in the region. The Dairy Initiative aims to create self-sufficiency through large-scale production and the supply of dairy products to the local population, placing particular emphasis on the youth population. Rabuka's visit to Papua New Guinea has not been strictly for the third FIPIC summit, as bilateral talks between the governments of Fiji and PNG took place on Friday, 19 May. Several agreements, including the announcements of respective high commissions to be established in Fiji and PNG, were also announced. And now, the weather forecast for the next 24 hours.
This is TV1 News. Sports is next. Stay tuned. There's a sense of pride when you're able to do something right, a financial decision that has just really good benefits. With Bisky Life Insurance, there's that alleviation of of that worry when you pass away. The benefits of the BSP Life Insurance would meet those expenses on behalf of my family. If you're young and you have kids, you owe it to your children to make sure they're not left behind when you pass on. With you for life. He says the best hunters players come from his region. So does she. But there's one thing that brings everyone together. SP Laga, Bunyam Yumi. From the rich soils of the highlands, the finest coffee has been grown by generations of Papua New Guineans. Expertly blended and roasted with over 80 years of experience, making the finest cup of Nescafe New Guinea blend. Angie's own coffee. All One Talks adds some excitement to your festivities with the Flame Easter Bonanza. Win a slice of a whopping 300,000 kina by purchasing the Flame Family Bundle Pack, which includes rice, sugar, flour and vegetable oil, all in one go. Highlight these goodies on your receipt and scribble your full name and contact details on the back and pop it in the entry box in selected stores across PNG. Full fortnightly draws, 100 winners, 3,000 kina each. You don't want to miss out. This promotion ends on the 31st of May. Flame, strength and energy. Terms and conditions apply. Hardware House launches the low-cost quick build kit home. Built with quality building materials from the leading manufacturer of steel products and kit homes, Atlas Steel. Going now at introductory prices, one bedroom kit home at 79,000 kina, two bedroom kit home at 99,900 kina, and three bedroom kit home at 125,000 kina. You can also opt for solar units to be installed in the kit home at an extra charge. For more information, email info at hardwarehouse.com.pg. Uh. Hikari United FC bows out from the Oceania Football Confederation Champions League after suffering one goal to two defeat to Tahiti's AS Pere early this afternoon. The PNG team won the first group game against Ifira Blackbird but lost the remaining matches against Tiga Port and AS Pere. Hikari United FC was popped on in the first 15 minutes of the final group match. The momentum shifted as the Mets continued following a Yagi Yasasa free kick that hit the crossbar in the 14th minute. From there, it was all A.S. Pirae for the rest of the first half. Returning from one goal deficit, the Red Army flexed its muscles to make a promising second half. The injury to goalkeeper David Tomare was a crucial blow for the team which made the task for substitute goalkeeper Russell Chris was too big for him to handle. The pressure mounted for her carry as the clock ticked on. Skipper Daniel Joe responded well with a penalty goal to level the score one all when Artie Kepo was taken out from the play as he surged downfield 10 minutes into second half. Nine minutes later, A.S. Pire responded with a goal to take the lead again. It was the Mets' winning goal for the Tahitians. Although Ekari tried its best to get back into the contest, A.S. Pirai held on to come out on top with a win. Ekari head coach Eric Komeng said defeat was a little frustrating because his side came up with a goal to level the scoreboard. Ekari United is now resetting its focus to National Soccer League back home. Rex Lita, TV1 Sports. Capital Rugby Union Clinic program that was held recently proves to be a useful workshop for the clubs, players and the code. Those who attended the workshop are keen to put into practice what they learned. 
at the CRU Clinic Outreach Program, international rugby duo Aidan Toa and Paddy Ryan imparted necessary game skills and knowledge into players from scrum to defence and to general plays. The program was very helpful to rugby development officers, coaches and players who attended the program early this month. Among the coaches was MBB Marlins head coach Rawali Bokwik, who attended the program found it very useful because half of its players in his team come from rugby league background. And rugby union tactically is a pretty much different sport to them. Coach Bokwik said the program has taught them how to tighten up the scrum base when they pack the scrum. He said the club has learned this from the clinic program and will try out the tips in the games they play. If it wasn't for, for that clinic, I don't think we would have the scrums that we had. It was, um, what do you call it, uh, it was better than uh, previous scrums, yes. Previous scrums, previous lineouts. There's a little bit of the, the techniques and technicalities of what Paddy was showing with the lineouts, the lifts, especially the, and the binding, the, the new binding techniques, that helped a lot for us. Female players and coaches who attended the program also found the program useful. But what is even more interesting is that the players who attended the program go to share the information with the rest of the team at the training. The Valley Hunters women's team head coach Margaret Nawa said, although she did not attend the program, her team has learned from the program and is keen to put into practice while out on the field. The, um players did attend and they were very excited about the clinic and they're um, very excited to take on this weekend and put into practice what they learned. Some teams have already practiced the techniques they learned, which is a bonus for the team, the competition and the code of rugby union. Coach and players believe that most of such programs will help boost the standard of rugby, not only in the capital rugby union, but also in the country as well. Rex Lita, TV1 Sports. Theodi sponsored an exciting T20 cricket tournament between the Lake Cricket Association and the Popondeta Cricket Association recently. The tournament aimed to select a team to represent Morbe at the PNG Games and Isuzu Cup. Lake Gold emerged as the winners in the women's grand final, led by Captain Elizabeth Farah's explosive 36 runs. In the men's match, Lake Gold successfully chased a target of 130 runs to claim victory. Taviri representing LCA expressed gratitude to Theodist for their unwavering support in revitalizing the cricket tournament after a decade-long delay. Jean Pascal, Henry Regional Manager of Theodist, lay emphasized the company's commitment to sports and empowering young players in Papua New Guinea. And that wraps up the news tonight. Have a top week ahead. Bye for now. The TV1 News was proudly brought to you by BSP, our bank, our people.